Hi, this is Alfouzia Nihar from At Home Tuition. Welcome to our session today. The topic that we are going to discuss in today's video is Method 3. In finding equation of a circle passing through 3 points. So far, we saw two methods to find the equation of circle when 3 points are given. Now, the third method. Here is where we will be using the important well-known theorem. The perpendicular bisectors of two chords meet at the center. So we are going to apply this concept and find the equation of a circle that passes through the three given points. In this method, we will find midpoints, slopes and use one point formula. Finally, we will be using radius center formula as we did in second method. So in this method, we will find what is center and radius and plug them in the standard equation of the circle. Here we go. Let me take a very simple question as an example. We are supposed to find the equation of a circle that passes through the three given points P, Q and R. Here is the diagram to illustrate this question. Okay, Let L1 and L2 be the perpendicular bisectors for P, Q and Q, R. Okay. Step 1 find the midpoints of PQ, QR and let us find the slope. Hope you all are familiar with midpoint formula. Here is the midpoint formula. You can take the first pair as X1, Y1 and Q as X2, Y2. Let us plug in these values in this formula and find the midpoint of PQ. Plugging in the X coordinates, plugging in the Y coordinates. 2 over 2 is 1, 6 over 2 is 3. So the midpoint of PQ is 1 comma 3. So following the same formula, let us find the midpoint of QR. We are going to apply the same formula. X1 is 0, Y1 is 5, X2 is negative 1 and Y2 is 2. Plug in these values in this formula. Please note that there is a negative sign before 1. So please be careful while plugging in the negative numbers. So it will be negative half comma 7 over 2. I'm not converting anything into decimals. I'm just keeping the fractions as it is. So here is the midpoint of QR. Hope you are clear with step 2. So far we found the midpoints of two chords. Now let us find the slope of the two chords. So let us find slope. I'll write the formula on the board. Now let us plug in the values in the slope formula. 4 over negative 2. Positive over negative will give you a negative answer. So negative 2 is the gradient of PQ. Hope you are clear with step 3. We are going to follow the same formula, st same step for step 4. So that we can find the slope of the another chord QR. Plug in the XY coordinates in this formula. You must be very clear with rules of signs while solving any problem. So 2 minus 5 over negative 1 minus negative z minus 0. Negative over negative is positive. 3 over 1 is 3. So far we found gradients of both the chords and the midpoints of the chord. Hope you are clear with all these step 4. Okay, now let us use the concept here. The line L1 is perpendicular to PQ. Same way L2 is perpendicular to QR. So what do we do when to find the slope of a perpendicular line? It is nothing but the negative inverse. Am I right? So the gradient of L1. We got the slope of PQ in step 3 that is negative 2. Now we are going to find the perpendicular slope of PQ. So we have to just take the negative inverse. Negative times negative will give you positive. Hope you are clear with step 5. Same way we are going to find the perpendicular slope of QR. That is nothing but slope of L2. Because L2 is perpendicular to QR. Just take the negative inverse. We got the midpoints and we got the slopes. Now we need to solve for the center. How can we do that? We can use one point formula and plug in the corresponding slope and midpoints and get two equations. As usual, we can solve the two equations and find the xy values, which is nothing but the center. 
and again we can find the radius. First let us concentrate on the center. We can use one point formula. So equation for line 1. Plug in the midpoint of PQ as x1, y1 and slope of PQ as m in this formula so that you will get the equation for line 1. Please make sure that you are using the perpendicular slope. Let this be equation number 1. To find the equation of the second line EL2, plug in the midpoint of QR and slope of perpendicular slope of QR. So it would become negative negative would become plus. So this is equation number 2. We are going to solve equation number 1 and 2 so that we can find the values x comma y. Let's simplify equations 1 and 2 by getting rid of the denominators. So we will get a simple xy equation with variables on one side of the equation and the constant on the other side of the equation. So that your uh, system of equation will be easy for you to solve either by substitution or elimination. So multiply equation number 1 throughout by 2. 2 2 gets cancelled out. Distribute here 2y minus 6. Same way if you distribute 1 x minus 1 on the right side. Shift 2y to the other side by subtracting 2y from both these sides. Add 6 on both these sides. Instead adding 6 you can add 1. So equation 1 is rewritten as x minus 2y equal to negative 5. Multiply equation 2 throughout by 6 so that you can get rid of both the denominators 3 and 2. Add 2x on both these sides. Add 21 on both these sides. We have rewritten equation number 2 without any denominator. So 2x plus 6y equal to 20. Let us solve equation number 1 and 2 and get the values for x and y so that it will be our center. You can use elimination or substitution, whatever method you are very comfortable with. To make the coefficients of y same, I am going to multiply this equation throughout by 3 so that y will become 2y will become 6y. Just add the equations so y will be eliminated. Divide both these sides by 5 so that you will get the x value. We have got x is equal to 1. You can substitute back this in equation number 1 or 2 so that you will get the y value. Replace x by 1. Subtracting 1 from both these sides we get. Divide both these sides by negative 2 so you will get the y value. Yes, we got the center. x, y is 1, 3. So from the midpoints and slopes, this is how we find the center. Hope you are clear so far. Now it remains for us to find the radius. Radius is nothing but the distance between any one of the point on the circumference of a circle to the center. Am I right? Okay, we have got the center and we have uh, three points on the circle PQR. You can pick up any one of the point along with the center. You can use the distance formula to find the radius. Because you know, it is nothing but the distance from one point to the other point. Here I am going to take the point P. So you can find the distance between P and the center C. Apply distance formula. Plug in the values of x1, y1 and x2, y2 in the distance formula. So we will get, I am getting square root of 5 as the radius. We have center and radius now. It is enough if you just plug in this in the equation of the circle. I mean the standard form of the equation. So we are going to use center radius form to get the equation of circle here. Where h and k is the center and r is the radius. Plug in those values here. So we get here is the equation of a circle when we get the three points p, q, r. We were just using the midpoints slope perpendicular slopes here. That's it for this problem. We were just using 11 steps, 11 simple steps with simple concepts. So whenever you're dealing with such problems, you better draw the figure so that you'll get a clear idea. So which line is perpendicular to what chord? So it will make your idea very clear. Find the midpoints for the chord PQ, midpoint for the chord QR and slope for the chord PQ 
and slope for the cot QR. Same way, once you find the slope, it will be easier for you to find the perpendicular slope because it is nothing but the negative inverse. Same way, you can find the perpendicular slope for QR2. And then the main important thing is we need the center and radius. So how do we find the center? To find the center, we need two equations using the midpoints and the slopes. So I am using one point formula here. You can apply the same concept whenever you need to solve a center. You may also get questions like find the center or radius separately. If that is the case, you can use the same concept, midpoint and slope. So you are finding the equation for line 1 and equation for line 2. Then you can just solve these two equations. For your better, uh, for your convenience, I'm just getting rid of the denominators. You can just proceed as it is if you're comfortable dealing with the fractions. But I prefer getting rid of the denominators. So the equations will become very simple. So you can easily use elimination or substitution and solve for xy, which is nothing but the center. And finally, I'm finding the radius using the distance formula. Please uh, know that uh, radius is nothing but the distance between one of the points on the circumference of a circle and the center C. Center is the answer just we got in step 9. So after finding the center and radius, plug them in the standard form of a circle. Please make sure you square the radius here because you need not write the radical here. That's it for this problem. In case if you have any query or in case if you have any request on any particular topic, please let me know so I can make a video on that topic. Hope you are clear with this session. See you in the next session.